In this section of the course, we're going to take a look at the strategy design pattern. And this basically allows you to partially specify the behavior of the system and then augment it later on. So that may have sounded a bit cryptic. So let's talk about what this is all about. So many algorithms can actually be decomposed into what I would call the higher and lower level parts. So for example, let's consider the process of making tea. So the process of making tea can be decomposed into something high level, like the process of making a hot beverage. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're making tea or coffee or any other hot drink, you have to boil the water and you have to pour the water into the cup. So that is the high level part. And then you have the tea specific things. So after you have done the high level stuff, what you can do is you can take a tea bag, put it into the water, you can add milk if you're British, or you can add lemon or something like that. So the high level algorithm, which we specified up above, the process of boiling water and pouring it into a cup can then be reused. So the tea specific things are tea specific, but everything else can be reused for making something else like coffee or hot chocolate, for example. And this is supported by the beverage specific strategies. So that is where the strategy pattern actually comes in. So the strategy design pattern essentially enables the exact behavior of a system to be selected either at runtime. So there are two implementations as we've seen with many design patterns. There's either a possibility of specifying it at runtime, the dynamic strategy or at compile time. And that would be the static strategy. Now, this pattern is also known as policy in many programming languages, including especially the C++ language. The strategy design pattern is very simple and all it really does is it takes away a part of an algorithm and says that you can substitute different implementations of that algorithm as part of the overall design. So we're going to take a look at an example of how to build HTML pages or markdown pages from a list of elements. So we're going to just be building very simple lists, but we're going to do it using the strategy design pattern. So what I want is I want some sort of text processor, which has two different output formats. So we're going to have an enumeration for the output format and I'll have markdown as well as HTML as the two possible options. Now, in order to process these two formats, I'm just going to process lists of elements. I'm not going to process the entire HTML specification or anything like that. I'm just going to process lists. And since we have two different ways of outputting a plain text representation of list, we have the HTML way and we have the markdown way, we're going to define an interface called iList strategy. So this interface has to be implemented by anyone who wants to have the capability of outputting a list. Now, remember in the HTML notation, we have a list as the preamble. So we have the tag for the list. And then for each of the elements, we have uh, the list uh, defined like this, uh, for example. And then we have the closing tag as well. So we need to incorporate the opening tag, closing tag, as well as the list elements as part of the list strategy. So what I can do here is I can define the appropriate interface members so I can have void start. And we're going to be building a list using a string builder. So I'll add a string builder as the argument here just for the sake of simplicity. So we have the start. We also have the end. That's when you need to add the closing tag. And we'll also have add list item, which actually adds a new, actually adds a new list item. Once again, using a string builder as B and here is the item itself. So this is the interface that we need to implement. And first of all, we're going to implement this for the HTML output. So we're going to have a class called HTML list strategy, and it's going to uh, implement I list strategy. Like so, there we go. Let's implement the missing members. Now for the HTML list, uh, the start has to add the opening tag. So that's going to be sb.append line. And we're going to have the opening tag here. And similarly for the closing tag, uh, let's put it into end. So that's where we're going to terminate the list. And for each of the items, what we're going to do is we're going to sb.append line. And here I will just add a a bunch of spaces and then we have the list item then the item itself and then the closing list item tag as well so we are done with the html list strategy we can also build the markdown strategy which is a lot down 
list a strategy, which is also going to implement I list strategy. Let's once again implement the missing members. Now the start and the end are going to be empty because we don't need to add anything in the markdown representation. And in the case of adding the actual list item, what we're going to do is just put an asterisk and that's how you make lists in markdown. So we're going to do sp.append line and then uh, here I'll just put, uh, well, let's have a single space, then an asterisk, then another space, then the actual text item that we want to output. And that's it. That's how you make lists in markdown. So now that we have this, let's build a text processor, which actually uses all of the strategies that we've just built. So here is a text processor. And in the text processor, we have to have a string builder that we're going to be using to build our actual text. So I'm going to have string builder sb equals new string builder. There we go. And uh, that's going to be the, that's going to be uh, private, obviously. In addition, we're going to have the actual strategy. So I list strategy uh, called list strategy. And that's what we're going to be defining. Now, it's really up to you whether you want it initialized as part of the constructor argument or whether you want to have some sort of method for specifying the uh, actual type or whether you want to have an enumeration. We suddenly made an enumeration here up above output format, so we may as well use it. So I'm going to add a method to text processor called set output format, set output format. And in actual fact, we have uh, the argument as output format format. And here I can just switch on it, uh, switch format, like so, generate the uh, switch labels. In the case of markdown, we set the list strategy to the new markdown list strategy and then uh, break. And in the case of HTML, well, you've guessed it, we have list strategy equals new HTML strategy. And once again, uh, we uh, jump out of here as well. So this is how you define the output format. You use an enum member, but the actual uh, operation changes the list strategy that you're using. So now that we have this, we have some sort of interface for appending a list, for example, public void append list. And we're going to take an I enumerable of strings. So I enumerable of string items like so. And what we're going to do here is we're going to be using that strategy that we've defined to make the preamble for the list, then to process each of the elements in turn, and then put the closing tag if there is a closing tag. So I'm going to do list strategy dot begin, or is it start in our case, and passing in the uh, string builder. Then for each of the uh, item in items, I'm going to say list strategy strategy dot add list item and here I'll provide the string builder as well there as well as the item itself and then I'm going to do list strategy dot end and once again specifying that string builder in here so this is how you append the list now in addition I'm going to uh, add additional functionality so I'll override the two string method so that I can output the information from uh, the string builder so I'm going to uh, return sp to string. In addition, I want to maybe clear the buffer that I have in the string builder. And for this, I can use a delegating member. So here we can just look for clear and we can proxy that over as well. So now I have uh, the clear method, which just does sb.clear as well. Okay, so now that we've built all of this, let's see how we can actually start using this strategy pattern in our code. So I'm going to make a new text processor. There we go. And then I will set the output format first of all for markdown we'll take a look at how that works i'm going to append a list append list so so um, and i'm going to make a new array where we're going to have foo bar and baz maybe and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write line tp and we have the two strings so that two string here is going to be used when we write line something okay so we can execute this and see what we actually get Okay, so we're now getting a nice markdown list, and then we can try the HTML strategy. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the buffer in the text processor. I'm going to set a different output format. So this time around, it's going to be HTML, 
and then I will once again append the list and then output the contents of TP. So if we do it this time around, we get the output for the HTML. We get an unordered list and then list items, foo, bar, and baz. So this is how you can switch the strategy that's being used to output text by essentially in, the, in our case, all we're doing is we're using an enum member, but you can easily use the actual type. Maybe you want to instantiate a copy of uh, the appropriate uh, element, the appropriate uh, strategy, and actually pass that in. Instead, it's really up to you how you design the API, but the takeaway from this is that the strategy pattern lets you change a part of the overall implementation by substituting a particular component. The kind of implementation of the strategy pattern that we've just built is kind of classic and it's very convenient for us to be able to change things at runtime. So at runtime you can change the output format from one to another, thereby changing the overall operation of the entire text processor. And the text processor might be doing other things which do not relate directly to these strategies being used. Maybe some of the parts are common to both HTML and Markdown, like for example, making sure that the quotes and the angled brackets are correct, for example. So we can also envisage a scenario where we don't really need the dynamic flexibility. We do want to be able to define different strategies for the text processor to take, but we always know which strategy we want at compile time as opposed to runtime. And in this case, having a method like set output format is no longer necessary. We no longer no longer need it because we can statically define what kind of strategy we want. Now the question is how do you pass that in? You can certainly pass it as a constructor parameter or configure your dependency injection container. So for example, you might have a dependency injection container which says, oh, can you please register, uh, for example, the markdown strategy or markdown list strategy and uh, register it as a new specify iList strategy. So this is how it's typically done in the real world. And this is also in a way dynamic because then you have one central point in the DI container where it gets configured where you can actually switch from one to another. However, if you really don't want to use a dependency injection container, then you can hard code the strategy right into, let's say, a generic argument. So here, for example, what I can say is text processor is going to depend on some list strategy called ls. And then, and then here, when we come to make a list strategy, we just say new ls, just a new ls like so. And of course, for this to work, we need a couple of constraints. We need to say ls is an iList strategy and it has a default constructor. But once you satisfy this, everything else is okay, meaning that from now on, we can take that example that we had previously and we can write it differently. So we can say TP equals new text processor, and here we specify the strategy. So here we say we want a markdown list strategy, like so. And then of course, we can once again do TP dot append list and we can have a new set of items foo bar and baz for example and we can write line tp now this time round we cannot just do a clear we cannot reassign tp once again if i now say tp equals new text processor processor of html list strategy it's not going to work unfortunately, even though, well, here we go. Here is the error. So essentially you cannot assign it because it's already of type markdown list strategy. And no, you cannot just make it a text processor of iList strategy because then you're violating the constraint that it has a default constructor, for example. So that's not possible either. So we're going to make, make a second one. So we're going to say var tp2 equals new text processor this time with an HTML list strategy. And then we can perform the same kind of operation. So here I just changed tp to tp2. And then if we actually go ahead and execute this, we get the, exactly the same output. So this is an implementation of this strategy pattern where the definition of which strategy to use is static as opposed to dynamic. So it's defined at compile time and then you can no longer change it later on. 
So one location where the uh, strategy pattern is used quite a lot is when it comes to equality and comparison in the .NET framework. So let me show you a very simple example. Let's suppose that you have a class called person. So you have a class called person. Let's suppose that there's just a bunch of fields. So we have may maybe some uh, identifier, like you would have a primary key in a database. You'd also have a person's name. And you could also define, for example, a person's age, like so. So we can make a constructor which initializes all of these. And let's imagine that we have a list of people. So we have var people equals new list of person. Let's suppose that we got the data from a database. And now we want to, for example, sort this list. So I can say people uh, people.sort. And what do you think would happen here? right out of the box. The answer is nothing. The answer is that here, when we do the kind of uh, sorting without specifying what we're sorting by, we're not really going to get any results. We're going to the default array.sort implementation because that's what a list will actually do behind the scenes. It will go to array.sort. So we're not going to get anything because at the moment, the .NET framework doesn't really know how to sort uh, person objects. We have to give it a strategy for how to do that. Now, the, there are two ways of doing it. You can specify the default strategy for all uh, types, uh, all, all instances of class person. You can specify the default strategy or you can specify custom strategies. So if you want the default strategy, just go and use your IDE, whatever IDE you use. And what you want to generate is you want to generate relational members. So uh, in this case, I want to use the ID uh, for uh, the actual uh, implementation. So I want to use the ID field. And after I generate code, uh, you can see that I get like lots of stuff. So suddenly my uh, person class becomes an I comparable of person. Uh, it also becomes just ordinary I comparable, the, the kind of uh, weekly type version. And then I get lots of generate code for, uh, first of all, compare to. So remember, compare to is something that uh, is basically uh, going to return an ordering relation. So it, it compares the IDs because that's what I specified. So it does ID dot compare to other dot ID. And it's going to return negative one, zero or positive one, depending on uh, the ordering relationship between uh, the ID of uh, uh, the current element and the ID of the other element we're comparing to. So if it gets minus one, that means the first is less than the second. If it gets a zero, that means they're equal. If it gets a one, that means that the second is greater than the first. So then we have the weekly typed version. You can see that there's plenty of scaffolding here. There's also type checks because it's weekly typed. You have to basically cast it to the right thing. And then uh, you sort of, uh, you throw an exception uh, if uh, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't match what you were looking for in the first place. And then you have the relation operators like less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal. These are all automatically generated for you. So uh, as soon as we've done this, people.sort now takes a meaning. Uh, when you say people.sort, you are now sorting by ID. Of course, what you can do is you can be explicit about it. You can say that, well, we are in fact sorting by ID and you can sort by other criteria as well. So for example, I can say people.sort and here I have lots of options of what to specify. So for example, I can specify an I comparer, which is just a delegate. So here I can specify a Lambda, which takes two people X and Y, and it basically returns uh, the comparison of their name. So I can say X dot name and then uh, compare to Y dot name. That way we're actually going to sort by name. Uh, as you can see, it's a rather long winded kind of thing. Typically you'd use link and in link you just say, uh, get the, uh, Get, use the name for, for actual uh, sorting. So this is uh, somewhat long-winded. This is not the link sort. This is the sort that's built into the list type. Uh, but what about strategies? What about uh, the different strategies that I use? So uh, here, this is kind of the default strategy. The default strategy is just to compare objects using relational operators. And we've defined lots of them up here. We've defined all of these things. We've defined compare to. And so now this uh, this approach, people.sort, is going to use the ID by default. Here, we're specifying the strategy as a lambda. We're basically saying this is the strategy that we want to use in the sorting process. What you can also do is you can use the code generation facilities of whatever ID you're using to generate additional comparers. So here, 
here uh, we've made uh, a default comparer which compares by ID, but we can make additional compares uh, which compare by name, for example. So here behind the scenes, I'm using the code generation facilities for a relational comparer. I'm specifying the name as a comparer. And here I get some generated code. So here you can see that we get plenty more generated code. So we generate a sealed class called name relational comparer. And all it does is it implements an I comparer of person, and then you have a public int compare method, which compares two people X and Y, as you can see here. And then it goes through the motions comparing the actual strings, kind of like what I'm doing uh, down here, except that I'm not using the uh, ordinal comparison. So here I'm using compare to, which is actually culture specific, so that can backfire on you. And uh, down here, what you can see is we also have a static member, which exposes the comparer as a static member member. Uh, this is just a usability thing, basically. So what you can now write is instead of uh, writing this, what you can say is you can say people dot sort uh, person dot name compare name compare. And this is once again, going to sort by name by comparing people's names. So in all of these cases, you're using uh, strategies. So in people dot sort, you're using kind of the default strategy, the one that's provided automatically, either in the class, or if you forgot to actually generate it, it's just going to use the default uh, approach, which isn't really useful, because it's probably going to look at memory addresses of objects or something, because there is no real information that can be used for for the purposes of sorting. So the second one is where the strategy is provided by a lambda. And here we've specified the lambda to be used for comparison. This is actually, uh, if you are uh, thinking about uh, link operators, then every single link operator is effectively fed a strategy that it subsequently uh, adapts to finding, for example, unique objects by a certain field and so on. And finally, what we've done here is a bit of a utility. So here, what we've done is we've generated additional inner classes. So here is the uh, name relational compare class. So we've generated an additional class, which is subsequently exposed as a static member. And this is once again, a strategy. So it doesn't have the word strategy in its name, but you know, it's a strategy. It's a strategy for comparing objects using the name field as the discriminator, as the part that you are actually comparing. So this is how the .NET framework uses the strategy pattern to perform comparisons. And of course, the same goes for equality. So uh, here we've talked about things like I comparable, but here, uh, similarly, you would have I equatable, and then you would have equality strategies when looking for distinct objects, for example, looking for objects with unique names or unique IDs, for example, you would have a an I equatable, and you would use that to compare the objects. So uh, that's how the framework actually uses the strategy pattern.